Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this demo where we're going to show off a little bit of the power and potential of Adobe Experience Platform while actually running through some um, fun and uh, to the point generative AI experience that we've built. You've won a free vacation. We're in the far distant future where humanity has settled the solar system and you can go anywhere you want. But just like in the old days, that's an overwhelming amount of places that you can go. Uh, there are multiple planets, moons, cities, uh, and all of them have unique things, traits, experiences to have. How can you possibly find out where you want to go? Well, in the old days, you would go to a travel agent, and a travel agent is very good at taking your feedback, taking in your preferences, shifting on the fly as new information comes to light. Um, but the travel agents are only people, and after all, they are necessarily constrained by the things they know about. And if they don't know about a particular city in detail, well, then they won't be much help to you there. Humanity then moved away from travel agents, uh, except in, you know, certain circumstances, and instead went for the internet. And we all know the experience of trying to find a great vacation uh, or a place to go online by yourself, hours of research, clicking through multiple websites, scrolling through pages of results, uh, using sliders and input fields to try and filter down the results to something. And even when you do pick something, you're never quite certain if it is exactly what you want or if it is just marketed to look that way. We think that AI, generative AI, uh, conversational AI in particular, can help bring us back to that same travel agent experience personalized and uh, adaptive, but with uh, a lot more knowledge at its base. Um, so to that point, we created an unmanageable amount of data, something no human could reasonably know the details of. We used AI to generate 6,000 unique space vacation packages, again, spread across the solar system. And we created Solari to help you, as the one that is going to travel to one of these places, find the best fit for you. So let's begin. I'll walk you through the demo and explain the tech along the way. So hitting let's go, first we ask for the name and details. The point of this is really to be personalized. So we want to have a sense of who you are. We're also under the hood showing uh, the power of Adobe Experience Platform. So uh, this is kicked off, but I want to show you in the meantime that in AEP, this is Adobe's Experience Platform, a profile has been or should have been created using this uh, email. And we filled in some details um, just automatically as we go. There's the you know first name and last name that I typed in. We set the location to London, but it could be the real location. Um, whatever your user has consented to, um, identifying properties, etc. We will use this going forwards, but just for your uh, knowledge in the background, there is now a customer of our travel agency that exists here that we can um, follow along as they go through their journeys. Back into the demo, uh, the AI now uh, asks a question to begin. So you're ready for a holiday, but can I ask why do you want to go on vacation? For a lot of people, this is the hardest one of all to answer, but it is an important one for what we're trying to show here is to get to know you and your preferences. I'm going to say, I want to spend time with my family. What's happening now is we are uh, massaging the text of this prompt. So we're taking the conversation that's happened so far, we're adding it as context and sending that off to ChatGPT's uh, API, where you get sort of one interaction at a time, not like the web interface. But normally in a chatbot scenario, you would ask a question and the bot would give you an answer. Here we need to reverse and flip the script a bit and have the bot ask follow-up questions. So we created 20 tags uh, that might be appropriate for travel uh, people. It might be family-oriented. It might be uh, adventurer or likes extreme sports, that kind of range. And now the bot's job is to say, given this context, given the answers to this question, which tags would you think the user is best suited for? You know, what's the balance of tags that they would have? And if you don't have enough information to say this is their number one tag, what would you ask as a follow-up question to find out more? So in this case, it asked, what kind of activities do you enjoy doing with your family? Uh, outdoor or indoor? I'm going to say indoor, just to change it up. We have that 
the bot also offering some quick suggestions as an answer so people don't have to spend too t much time deciding. Uh, what are some of your favorite indoor activities to do with your family? Board games or movie nights? I suppose movie nights. I'm not sure how pertinent this is, but somewhere in the background it should be building up this list of tags. It's going to ask a maximum of four questions here. Why is it special? Bonding time? Shared interests? Um, I could fill in a free text one here. Uh, I'm just going to say bonding time. So at this stage, it is now out of questions that it can ask. We've kind of capped it here. So it's placed me into a number of tags, and now it is searching our large database. So again, we have these 6,000 uh, records that we have existing. There's far too many um, that would fit my profile. I couldn't possibly scroll through those all. What we've asked it to do is take those, do a regular database search to get you know 30 results back, and then have the AI take the tags into account, take the travel destinations, and shrink them down to offer a, a number one, which it recommends to me the Poseidon Prime family adventure, and then a number of others as well. So if I scroll through here, I can see we've got one on Neptune. There's probably some more on Neptune because Neptune seems to be more family oriented in our database. There's one on Uranus, um, uh, one on Saturn. If I liked any of these, I can go and see the details. And we filled in a lot of details here. So we had the AI generate the titles, yes, and the planets. But even on the planets themselves, there are details about the city itself that exists within a region. And inside there, the population, uh, safety, accessibility, and climate. So all of this can be give, uh, used to give feedback to the bot. So I could say something uh, if I wanted to, to say, oh, this is uh, a little too warm, maybe someplace uh, cooler would be nice, or these are all uh, a little too indoor oriented, maybe I'd like something different in this case. And it would respond appropriately as a real travel agent would. But I'm happy with this one. I like the one that it actually recommended me, uh, the Prospero uh, family adventure. I think it said Poseidon Prime, but this one's fine as well. I'm going to select this package now. Now, what's happening here under the hood, if you were lucky enough to visit our booth in person uh, at the Adobe Summit in London, you would have gotten an actual boarding pass. But in the meantime, we have done two things at once. We've generated a boarding pass for your trip, um, which you'll see momentarily. Then we've sent off the profile details to AEP. So there is a, well, I can show you this now actually. They're here in our journey orchestrator, um, or in our uh, events for our profile, we have the events and there is a commerce.purchases event that's come through. If I were to check the details, you can see, uh, yes, I was in this interface at the time. The uh, planet name was this. The package I selected was this. Um, there is a URL uh, for the boarding pass and a URL for the final link that we should send. So all this information came through in that event. Then we have a journey that we've set up in AEP specifically that lets us, when there is a purchase, and this is the UI that Adobe provides, when there is a purchase event that happens, we will update the profile with one of these items. We'll do a few other updates on the profile. And this makes sure that we're sort of storing it in a safe way that if the user ever opts out, we can sort of drop that data. And then we eventually will send an email. And this email, if uh, luck is on our side, should have come through here. And we can see the details here of a custom header for the planet we chose, my custom boarding pass, the image itself having been generated and accessible. Uh, you can see Prospero Family Adventure. You can see where I'm arriving and departing from. And if I click on this link, that link is also included in there. That will open up in a window here, which has my unique details, shows my uh, image that I had, the details of the trip, the facts of the planets, all that stuff we had in our database in a nice uh, ready to go format, plus a boarding pass for me. I hope you can see how that then this becomes very uh, important information for us to have. So this user that selected this information has given the travel agency company that we've envisaged here first party data. This is to say, you know, in, in some situations when you're using analytics uh, to fi figure out who your customers are and where they're going, there's a lot of guesswork involved. You analyze their behavioral patterns. They go to this website, they click on this, they purchase this. 
And then you use that to guess what their next action might be, to guess what categories they might fit into to see what their preferences are. You, you have to find it in the, the massive amounts of data. But in this sort of setup, the user actually gives you exactly what they want. They say, I like this. This is my feedback here. These are my preferences. I am much more happy to go on this. And then when you as a marketer want to send them another trip on uh, Jupiter or Uranus or Prospero, uh, you know that they're more open to that because they've bought something before. If you want to send them something about family oriented stuff, you know that that fits for them and that you're not accidentally sending something to someone who doesn't like their family. Um, it's much more powerful as a marketer. And we hope that you have seen that this is the case that uh, this was interesting to you. If you want to uh, have this um, and play around for it yourself, it exists at solari.innovationlab.cx. We look forward to speaking with you more about the details of both generative AI and Adobe Experience Platform. Thanks for watching. <laughs>